And both teams are shorthanded. Unfortunately, Ashley Awusa will not be playing for Maryland at the point again, out with a bad ankle, but they still have Angel Reese. Yeah, Angel Reese really has to shoulder more of the scoring load. This is a balanced Maryland attack, but you see her offensive rebounding numbers, not just first in the Big Ten, but tops in the country as well. And rebounding is not one of the strengths for Iowa. That is one of the concerns for head coach Lisa Bluter. Katie Benzen, number 11 for Maryland, has been running the point a lot in the absence of Arusu. And right away they go inside. The double brought by Caitlin Clark, and they force the early turnover. Well, I like Caitlin Clark getting in there and getting a hand on the ball as soon as Angel Reese puts it on the floor. Andy Taiwo in the starting lineup. Uh, McKenna Warnock missing her fourth straight game. Broke her hand in a very physical game against Ohio State. And there is an offensive foul on Clark. Well, I think this is going to be a tremendous defensive challenge. And then the offensive foul just really good job by Sellers of, of getting position, getting in front of Caitlin Clark. And Clark not quite believing it. Cheyenne Sellers is a true freshman from the Royal Ohio. Brenda Free says her defense is coming along. And there you see the starting lineup. Ben's in the terrific three-point shooter. And Diamond Miller. Boy, this is a Maryland team that has played games with many of its stars sidelined at a very difficult schedule. And there's the offensive rebounding that was such a concern for Iowa. Maryland got a couple of them that time, but couldn't convert. Here she is, Clark. Gets the assist to Gabby Marshall. This is when Iowa's really at their best. And Caitlin Clark said this is when she's at her best, when they can push in transition, spot up at the three-point line. Yeah, they absolutely love to get out in the open court, and especially Clark. That's well short. Sellers drawing the defensive assignment on Caitlin Clark. Marshall hit from the other side. There's contact with Benzin, nothing called. And now Sonato, who very rarely misses it when she gets it there. Pam, and that was not an easy shot over the outstretched arms of Angel Reese. Iowa has that advantage with the strength of Sonano inside. At 6-3, two-time first team, all Big Ten performer, but a good job by Diamond Miller to sneak inside. Missed some games with a sore knee earlier in the season, and that's a travel on Clark. Well, Caitlin Clark is at her best when she's in transition. You can see here just attacking the middle of the floor, eyes up, knows where her shooter is, and Gabby Marshall knocks it down. You can see the pass inside, Pam, and you mentioned it off the top. She leads the nation in scoring and assists. Leads her team in rebounding as well. One and done for Maryland. Here's Taiwo in the starting lineup for the fifth time this year. Mark went down and is talking to Roy Gobain about the lack of a Foul call, Cameron Inouye and Julie Cromenhoek also our officials this evening in Iowa City. Winning the offense and an offensive foul away from the action. Yeah, that was Chloe Bibby. She sidestepped it to try to set that screen. Got called for the illegal screen. And you'll be able to watch it on the slice cut right here. See how she just steps to the side, feet were wider than the hips, and the lean gets you called for that illegal screen. Maybe in her second year at Maryland after beginning at Mississippi State. Maybe is subbed out. Span, one of the Maryland assistants on your screen right. Brenda Freeze. Trying to get it inside, Sonato very patient and then very nifty footwork. And you know, well, that's an uh, overload that Iowa runs. They typically run that to give Sonano the post up, but the way Maryland plays defense on the post. They front the post, so that lob is open. 
Amy Collins, who subbed in for Bibby, missed her first shot. Sonamo chasing down the pass. And it dribbles in for Gabby Marshall. Oh, we're used to seeing Gabby Marshall knock it down from three. That was a really good job of the set of shot fake. Now Clark, who has not yet scored, shovels it over to Taiwo. Clark gets it back, left open, and she has it rim out. Everybody in the building thought it was going down. And hitting 31% of the threes on the season, but over the last few games has really brought that percentage up. Maryland's going to have an opportunity here for some mismatches. You look inside Kate Martin on Angel Reese. You've got Tommy Tywo on Diamond Miller. Look to post up those two and try to take advantage of those mismatches. Yes, McKenna Warnock, Warnock excuse me, at 6-1. That's what they're missing. Her length, her physicality that would have been a better matchup against people like Reese. Kate Martin drew a foul. Kayla Clark said she uses the first quarter to really get a feel for the game. And right now, she's doing a good job of facilitating to her teammates. Great post up by Sonano to hold her, hold her lob seal and go get that ball. Already three assists for Clark, who averages over eight per game. Martin at the free throw line, Iowa. Very good free throw shooting team, best in the Big Ten. So a seven point advantage, the biggest of the game for Iowa. Addison O'Grady, a freshman from Colorado, coming in to spell Sonano. Sellers able to get around the Collins screen, and this is a really talented freshman. She is, her motor is so high, brings an energy level on the defensive end of the floor, and in the absence of Ashley Owusu, Brenda Freeze asking her to be a little bit more offensive-minded. Sellers in the last couple of games has really shown out with back-to-back double-digit double, double scoring affairs. There's Brenda Freeze, Cedar Rapids about, oh, 20 minutes. North of Iowa City? Sounds good. Somewhere. <laughs> One direction. It's about 20 minutes away. Yep, that's Sellers. And Caitlin Clark applauds that. Pam, okay, I'm excited about this matchup because both of these players are a little edgy. Yeah. yeah, both these players can get a little chippy. I'm excited to see what this looks like throughout the course of the game. And they're already talking to each other. They're a freshman in Sellers, a sophomore in Clark. And now guarding Clark. Martin backing up. Shot clock is dying, so Clark quickly got it back to Martin. Rebound is taken down by Collins. Now they're doing a good job getting back. Both teams like to run transition offense. Bibby left open for three. Nailed it. Yeah, that pick and pop with Chloe Bibby is dangerous. If you don't communicate your coverage and somebody gets loose, you'll be in trouble. 5-0 Maryland run. Martin runs into Collins, who's called for the foul. Good game, Maryland down two as we hit our first timeout. The Buckeyes are up two, and Caitlin Clark has been the facilitator early in this ball game. She told us, Pam, she likes to take the first quarter to just get a feel for how the game is going. And right now, she's doing a great job of getting her teammates involved, sharing the basketball, finding the open player, and delivering a pass on the money. Already with three assists on the four made field goals for Iowa. And Caitlin is just four assists from 700 in her career. That's incredible. You know, we talk so much about her scoring that, that we really neglect a great strength of hers, which is facilitating, you know, leading the nation in assists as well. And it makes it incredibly difficult to defend somebody who can't just score the basketball, but find her open teammates. Martin at the free throw line. We've got a great women's basketball matchup Sunday afternoon on ABC. Aaliyah Boston and number one South Carolina take on the Lady Vols of Tennessee. ABC's coverage begins at 1 Eastern. Also, you can catch it on the ESPN app. Aaliyah Boston being mentioned for National Player of the Year, but 
number 22 in pink. Right there, Clark hits the floor. Maryland's being physical with her. And Pam might venture to say that that is every team's game plan, is to be physical with Caitlin Clark. You have to make everything she does incredibly difficult. Try to physically wear her down. You know, that was the first thing that Brenda Free said when we talked to the Maryland head coach, make her work on the offensive end, and they certainly are doing that. They are making their presence known. Iowa's gone almost three minutes without a bucket. Diamond Miller. Maryland re really missed Diamond Miller early in the season. She was out with injury. Since she's been back, really starting to get in a flow, in a rhythm. Missed 10 of the first 13 games with a sore right knee. Maryland loading up a big schedule, but didn't have a lot of players available. And Miller just blocked Clark. Reese working against Sonano, using her left hand. Yeah, I think that that is a really good strategy to get the ball inside to Angel Reese, let her attack and go at Sonano inside. So the Terps take the lead thanks to this 10 to 2 run. Iowa keeps having empty possessions. Clark has not scored yet. Marshall got tied up. And Angel Reese with another block for the Terps. Diamond Miller really good at this pull up right here. She does a good job of creating space, gets back two feet behind the three point line, knocks it down. And you can see her defensively using her length. I mean, she's a perimeter player, a perimeter player at 6'3 with those long arms, a really good job defensively of defending without fouling. Shot clock winding down. Caitlin Clark still has not hit a bucket. Tyro gets him an extra 20 seconds. Sonano was open momentarily, but Bibby got over there to smack it away. Lisa Bluter in her 22nd year in charge at Iowa. Got Caitlin Clark to stay home. Sonano got the mismatch with Benson. Good pass by Martin. And really good recognition of the switches. And, and Lisa Bluter talked about we have to exploit their switches in a different way than we do any other team we prepare. And that was a perfect example. Set that screen, quick slip to the rim. Then Sellers drives right by Clark. Another lead change. Pam Cheyenne Sellers is going to be special. I mean, her, her motor, her competitiveness. Right now, her, her understanding of it's time for me to step up. Wow, Sonano. Good pass by Tywo, getting it right where she wanted it. And it's uh, Sonano who is showing her offensive prowess. Well, the front on the post. Again, this is an offensive game plan. You clear out that backside so there's no help and lob over the top. Maryland's made four shots in a row after Reese banked it in. Clark in and out. She's had a couple of those threes spin away. And then the big step through by Miller couldn't get it to go. Ball stays with the Terrapins. Mimi Collins coming back in for Maryland, giving Sellers a well-deserved rest. Thank you, Mark, and we welcome those of you who just watched that men's game. We are here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Lots of back and forth so far at entertaining first quarter. The headline, though, is that Caitlin Clark has not scored yet. Benson able to get in there among the taller players, which is basically everybody. So Caitlin Clark, definitely the star, Steph White. Yeah, I mean, you look at her rankings, and she is the most exciting basketball player in women's college basketball right now. And no foul called on Bibby, but Maryland, known for its strong offensive rebounding, now has their biggest lead at five after Collins put it home. There you see Caitlin, 0 for 5 from the floor, leads the country in both scoring and assists. 
averaging 28 points per game, nothing so far. Martin, she misses, and the ball goes out of bounds to Maryland, where they can kill the remaining time on the clock. Yeah, I would expect Maryland to, to use the rest of this clock. And Brenda Freeze talked to us, and she said, this is a game where we really want to control the possession a lot more than we typically would. And Noah Ashley Owusu, they're impacted with a lack of depth, so controlling pace and tempo, even though they want to run and push, is really important. Well, Benzin, she went to Harvard, she's really smart, she knows to hang on to it here. Reese stopped by Martin, but then a foul is called. Lisa Bluter wanted to travel. And now Caitlin Clark's going to come back in, the offensive defensive substitution. Kate Martin called for the foul, her first. So Angel Reese for the University of Maryland. She is their leading scorer, and you've seen the Big Ten, one of the very best. Yeah, she's really a stat stuffer. She does so many things for this Maryland team, has had to step up offensively in the absence of Ashley Owusu, leads the Big Ten in offensive rebounds. She gets Maryland extra possessions because of her hustle plays. Second in the entire country, in fact, in offensive rebounds. So eight seconds for the Hawkeyes. Sonano looking for Clark, who got fouled by Reese. All right, we're in the bonus. And, uh, Brenda Freeze, I don't think that's what they quite had in mind, Steph. Yeah, no, you, you don't want to be taking a foul right there in transition when you're in the penalty. Caitlin Clark, in addition to everything else, is the best free throw shooter on this team at 88%. Gets to the line a lot, seven and a half times per game. That's what great scorers do, Pam. You know, you find different ways to score. Getting to the foul line is one of the easiest ways to put points on the board. It is fourth in the nation in free throw attempts. Now she's going to head out. Kylie Feuerbach, number four, comes in for Clark, who gets her first points of the evening. There's a uh, Kylie, a transfer from Iowa State, where she was a starter last year as a freshman. Maryland, with Miller, did not get it off in time. Too much dribbling, but Maryland leads it 24-19 after one. Two games against ranked. Ranked teams. opponents. Ranked yeah. opponents win every scouting report is solely focused on Caitlin Clark. Maryland is number 13 in the country, as you see. Uh, Iowa at number 22 in the AP poll that was updated today. Trying to get it inside to Sonano, but that was thrown away. Yeah, so we saw early in this ball game, Sonano got a couple of lobs over the top because there were no help side. Now Maryland really packing it in from the backside. That's when Iowa needs to look for that skip pass and knock down a three. Kevin Clark now with more turnovers than assists, has two points, both from the free throw line. Benzin thunks one, Sonano gets it up to Clark, and there's Angel Reese cutting her off. Marshall tripped, but kept her dribble going. Now you got the lob. No help side. Yeah. Good work. Sellers got over there, but not quickly enough. Yeah, you can hear Sonano calling for the ball. That's a great job of communicating with her teammates, but Angel Reese says, I'm bringing it right back down. And this is an excellent pass by Tomi Taiwo. She's hit her a couple of times over the top. Sellers just was not in position, and Sonano doesn't need any time to get that off. And then Angel Reese with the answer in transition. Maryland wants to get it out quick. I mean, this is a team who's used to playing with pace to get it out and push in transition. Sonano's first personal foul gets a rebound. Monica already in the double figures with 10. Taiwo gets it over to Martin who had her second shot blocked, tried to pass it out, but it's picked by Sellers. Benzin running the point, Ashley Owusu still out for Maryland. She has missed down three straight games. Oh, that's a beautiful look from Bibby, and Angel Reese says thanks. 
Yeah, I, I like how Maryland is mixing up who's getting touches on the block because you're going to have the mismatches. You see Ashley Owusu looking on. Yeah, both teams shorthanded. McKenna Warnock not available, still out with a broken hand for Iowa, missing her fourth straight game. But boy, Ashley Owusu, such an important component for Maryland as the point guard. Shot clock winding down. Good defense by the Terps. Maryland's energy on the defensive end of the floor is really good. Their activity level, their communication, recovering. I mean, look at this right here. The mismatch down low. Chloe Bib Bibby draws a double team, and that is perfect execution of that high to low cut down the middle by Angel Reese. Maybe the transfer from Mississippi State using up her final year of eligibility this season, second year at Maryland, and Angel Reese at the free throw line. Super Tuesday men's doubleheader features some of the top teams, both the ACC and the SEC. How about Wake Forest at Duke? Duke, the only ranked men's team. And Oscar Shibwe leading Kentucky against Tennessee in the Sonic Blockbuster, both games on ESPN and also on the app on Super Tuesday. Frantic end-to-end -end action. Sellers has just picked up her second foul. Well, that's one of the things that Brenda Fries mentioned to us. We cannot afford to get in foul trouble. I mean, this is a team that doesn't have a lot of depth. They've had so many injuries this season, and, and being active and aggressive while still being disciplined defensively is incredibly important. Yeah, that was two on Sellers, which is huge. The freshman for Maryland. Addison O'Grady coming in. It didn't need to be that difficult, but she finished it anyway. Yeah, look pretty. Gets Iowa back to within five. There are a lot of people in the arena tonight making a lot of noise. Reese decides to go right at O'Grady. O'Grady is a freshman, only averages about 10 minutes per game. Well, and Pam, Angel Reese has attacked with that right hand multiple times in this ball game. Going to be really important for Iowa to adjust defensively how they're playing her. Benzin picked up the foul. That is her first. Well, Caitlin Clark misses the three. But a great job by O'Grady of getting that inside position and a tough finish. And on the other end, that is just too open. Angel Reese played a little point guard back in her AAU days, so she can certainly take it off the bounce. And Reese with 14. She's 6 of 7 from the floor. Benzen's foul. Sending Gabby Marshall to the line. And you will notice that they don't have their last names on their jersey. This is a pink game, as you can tell by their uniforms. And each player for Iowa has gotten to choose the name of a person to put on their jersey to honor cancer survivors. Reese tried to get it into Bibby. Marshall. Looking around, Kate Martin over to Clark. Guarded by Diamond Miller, who brings great size. And then an offensive foul on Martin. Well, check out Kate Martin on the back side. Looks like she's going to get called for the moving screen. See her hip check out a little bit. They're going to call that all day long. Like a hip check in hockey. That's the second foul on Martin. Bibby coming around the Reese screen. Nice. Chloe Bibby is so good at the catch and shoot, whether it's from the three point line or in the mid range. I love the fact that they're running stagger screens to bring her to the ball. Averaging 13 points per game for the Terrapins. Caitlin Clark, 0 for 6 from the floor, has missed all four of her threes. Tywo with the miss in the paint. Well, I really like what Maryland's doing defensively against Caitlin Clark using length. So first it was Sh Cheyenne Sellers. Now it's Diamond Miller. Maryland Hene 
made four shots in a row before that miss, and now a foul on the Terps. That is two now on Mimi Collins. She and Sellers have two for the Terps. Martin and Sonano have two for Iowa. Collins out, number 14. Felicia Kozlova is in for Maryland. Well, Noah tied up and she dribbled right into three pink shirts. And I think Donna Miller had the advantage right there. She just went up for the shot, used her length to go over the smaller defenders. Knocked out of bounds by Iowa. Maryland holds on to possession, 23 seconds to shoot. Reese going at the freshman again. You got to get in the stance. Every time Angel Reese has touched the ball on the block, she's putting it on the floor. If you're standing straight up, she's going to go right around you. Caitlin Clark finally gets her first field goal of the game after she missed her first seven shots. Well, and that's one of the areas she talked to us about just growing even from last year to this year. So when my shot's not falling, I've got to find ways to, to get other buckets, getting to the rim, getting to the foul line, getting some easy scores. Oh, boy. Holy Bibby. Three-pointer. We said there's going to be a lot of offense, didn't we? Yeah. And that certainly has come from Maryland. Trying to get it into O'Grady. Remember, Simano on the bench with two personals. And another offensive rebound for Angel Reese. <laughs> Talks to Kozlova. Maryland up 10 as we take a timeout in Iowa City. I love the matchups that they've had on Caitlin Clark, using length along with their speed and athleticism to keep her uncomfortable. And Caitlin Clark's taking quite a few threes, right? Half of her shots have been threes, so she needs to find a way to get some easier buckets around the rim, maybe get out some in transition, get to the free throw line, and see, see the ball go through the net. And she's been stuck on three assists for a while as well. Meanwhile, Angel Reese has already gone over her season average. She has 18 points in the first half. She and Chloe Bibby doing most of the offensive damage for the Terps. But just look at Maryland's defensive intensity. They're in passing lanes. Look at where Iowa's running their offense. Under 10, and you haven't had a penetrating pass yet. And they force Iowa into another turnover. And that's the sixth turnover for Caitlin Clark. But just look, using their length, using their athleticism, doubling up. Caitlin Clark is always seeing two black jerseys in front of her team that is not known historically for its defensive prowess. We're doing a really good job tonight. Reese working on Sonato. Remember, she has two fouls. And the three put up by Kozlova. Now, I'm not sure if it was supposed to be a double team or not there. If it was, it was too, too slow. But Angel Reese, she scored it in the paint. Now she finds her teammates on the backside. This is 6-3 of the season for Kozlova. And did you see how quick that rotation was? I'm not even sure that was Angel Reese's rotation, but she saw the backdoor cut. She got over there and got a hand on it. And then hustles to save the offensive possession. Maryland on an 8 nothing run. She's just a competitor. You know, she's a competitor who has a high motor. Good from Baltimore, who is one of the highest great ranked recruits to ever come to Maryland. There's a travel. That's a travel. That is a travel. This happens in women's basketball all the time. You catch it, then you hop, and then you shoot it. That is a travel. It's not called. It's not called. Hardly ever. I complained about that a little bit when I was coaching. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Maryland with a huge 15-point advantage. Clark. 
Oh, oh that is three. Is the the right team end. has had halfway down and they've spun out tonight. And you, you wonder, well, she's got a great demeanor, but it's got to be really frustrating. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. I mean, she, she comes off of here. She just has a little bit of time and space. It looks good. It probably feels good. I mean, those are the ones that you just have to, you know, when you're a shooter, it doesn't matter how many you miss, you're, you're going to keep shooting. But those are right there. So Caitlin Clark's going to continue to let it fly. Clark has missed all five of her threes as Angel Reese got up and was giving some support to Coach Freeze, who is now talking to Cameron in a way. Solano at the free throw line. Brenda Freeze coming from a great basketball family. Sisters are coaches. Uh, Stacy Freeze was a terrific basketball player up the road at Iowa State. Sonano with a dozen points, but they're down 13. Miller, a little bit too strong. Bowie, uh, excuse me, Bibby, Chloe Bibby with the terrific offensive rebound. Now Clark in transition, trying to draw contact. She thought she did. Marshall steps in and boy, Iowa has gone almost three minutes now without a field goal. Kate Martin has just picked up her third foul. Yeah, if you're Kate Martin right there, you have to make a better decision. You've got two fouls already. You're likely not gonna get that offensive rebound. So some foul trouble for Iowa. Team already with a pretty skinny bench, and now Kozlova getting a lot of playing time. Benzin with Coach Freeze. Kozlova is from Moscow. That's in Russia, not the one in Idaho, <laughs> just to clarify. Thank you for that. Yeah. It's one out of two. Iowa has missed six of its last seven shots, four straight. Inside, Sonano usually doesn't miss, and she did. Well, she usually doesn't have to go to a counter move, right? So Maryland makes an adjustment, no longer fronting her on the block, playing behind. Great look in transition. Wow, bends it into Miller. Yeah, Sonano 65% from the floor this season. Five of seven tonight. Inside two minutes. Clark got it. One of the few times help side rotation was not there for Maryland. Caitlin Clark got an easy two. Benzin. Going by. Damn, she had a layup, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, she kind of pulled away. It looked like she had a pretty good path. And now Reese holds it, misses it. Clark, who leads this team in rebounding. Just about every other category comes up with it. Attacks Kozlova. Everything's a little flat right now when she's attacking the rim. One minute to go in the half. Miller picks up her dribble in a little bit of trouble. But Angel Reese back to Miller, got it off in time and hit it. You can't help off a ball side right there. You're not, you, they had it lined up in the middle. Iowa had a help side in the middle coming for Angel Reese. You can't leave Diamond Miller. Wow, that looked like a mess of an offensive possession. With the shot clock winding down. Miller hit the three. I was going to take as much time as possible. But you see Miller at 6-3 out there on Clark, about three inches shorter. Clark steps back. Doesn't need much space, does she? No. 
So Clark coming on with a couple of late buckets. Stops, get Caitlin Clark in the open floor in transition, then she'll start to excel. You see the longest drought for Caitlin. She went without a field goal for almost 15 minutes. Longest drought to start a game this season, but can score in bunches, leading the country in both scoring and in assists. And boy, Angel Reese has been the star tonight. Yeah, she has on both ends of the floor and, and really igniting her team offensively getting it done defensively. But I was trying to get it, make everything happen on the first side of the floor. They haven't gotten a lot of ball reversals. Get the ball moving side to side. Try to break down the D. Reese going against Sonano. <laughs> Angel Reese with a 20 points. And, and Brenda Freese talked to us and she said, you know, we try to get Angel Reese to understand she doesn't have to do the scoop shot every time. <laughs> well, the scoop shot's working tonight. Yeah, I might want to stay with that. This is the 10th 20 point game for Reese this season. Came over, tried to bother the shot, but Kate Martin is able to score. That's her first field goal. That's a tough finish. That's a tough finish to go in there and shoot that over the top of Angel Reese. Iowa team that averages about 85 points per game but being stymied here by Maryland. A lot of length on this team. Benson running the point with Ashley Wusu missing yet another game. Maybe a little off balance and now they're going to get a foul. If that's on Sonano, that's her third. And it is. That's a travel, and they got Diamond Miller for it. So some big-time foul trouble now. Three personals on two starters, Kate Martin and Sonano, who's the only Hawkeye in double figures in scoring tonight. New team with a very deep bench. McKenna Warnock missing her fourth straight game. You know, somebody that they do miss in a game like yes, this. Yes, they certainly do. They miss Warnock's toughness. They miss her length. They miss her size inside, her ability to rebound the basketball. Sonano bumped as she hit the deck. And, and that's a tough pass. That's a tough position to put Sonano in. There was backside help. She really was sandwiched. This is where Iowa needs to start looking for those skip passes. It's the third foul on Katie Benzen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Been the two guards shifted back to the point with a Wusu's injury. Iowa chases it down. Caitlin Clark. All the way across to Taiwo. Shot clock winding down. Taiwo looking for somebody to take a shot. She's going to have to probably do it herself, and she scores. Good patience. Just when we thought she might not know what the shot clock was, the seas parted, and she was able to get to the rim. Bibby missed. Bibby got off to a Good start, but has missed her last few. And the, after the tussle, it's scored by Miller. And that's what Sellers does, right? Those hustle plays. I mean, she just brings a different energy level and motor to this Maryland team that sometimes can be on cruise control. Cheyenne Sellers, number zero for the Terrapins, a true freshman from Ohio. Angel Reese again. Fouled by Clark. Two on Caitlin. I mean, you know, Angel Reese really just does everything. You see this hustle play right here. Look at Sellers get on the floor. Gets on the floor with Martin, able to keep it alive. And Diamond Miller able to benefit from that. Brenda <laughs> Freeze saying, good job. Men's College Basketball coming your way this Saturday on ESPN. Six Eastern, ninth ranked Duke hosting Florida State. Follow that with Kansas in Morgantown to play West Virginia. I believe they played Kansas State tonight. And finally, it's number three Arizona taking on Oregon. All three games on ESPN. Huh? Coach K continuing his farewell tour through the ACC. Barry yeah. Blair, when we did Texas a yes. last week, he's doing his farewell he tour. Is. Both of them. Racking up some presents some, along the way. Some really nice gifts. Good stuff, but a couple of men that have made tremendous impacts in college basketball. Bibby knocks it down. 
Well, she struggled with those easy ones, and then she said, yeah. no, this is my layup right out here at the three-point line. Third straight game in which Chloe has hit at least three threes. Win, they could get back into that top 16. Yep, Maryland would win tonight. He says they will bump the Oregon Ducks out. Maryland would be in the top 16, very important. The uh, top 16 seeds all get to host in the first and second round. And Caitlin Clark has not taken a shot yet in this quarter. And has two turnovers. And, and again, I think, you know, Iowa's just, they're trying to make it happen on the first side of offense. They're trying to make an entry pass and the first pass in offense, and it's not working. You have to force this Maryland defense to shift. Get a couple of ball reversals and then see what you can get. On three, very wide left by Miller. Clark comes away with it. Inside, terrific yes. feed to Sonato. And that's the other thing, get in transition. But you have to rebound the basketball to get in transition. And Iowa turned the ball over in four of their last six possessions to open this half before that completion to Sonato. And changing up the defense, going to the 2-3 zone. Taking a falter, a 5'11 freshman boarded it. Sellers with the defense on Clark. Miller dribbled right into Sonato. And now a foul coming up against Maryland. Sonano's got to be careful right there. She has three fouls. She didn't want to reach for that. And Caitlin Clark in transition. You see he gets multiple players defending her. The mismatch down low. Good delivery. Second foul on Angel Reese. Her second. Team second. Caitlin Clark bringing it up. Bumps against Sellers. Sellers doing a good job. And we talked about how savvy she is. Her father, Brad Sellers. NBA veteran, grew up in that basketball family, and there you see, this is just not what we're used to seeing. Well, what a challenge for Sellers. I mean, to, to guard one of the most dominant scorers in the country, the most dominant scorer in the country. And for Brenda Freeze to trust her to do that. Yeah, true freshman, remember. And Caitlin Clark is a sophomore, turned 20 a couple of weeks ago, but she's been torching, yes. absolutely torching teams all year. Back 40-point games, making remarkable shots. Gosh, both at Ohio State and Michigan game. That's what she can do. Well, and you certainly don't want her to get going if you're Maryland, but just look at how she creates space. That time she got extra lift on the ball. Caitlin Clark with her first three of the game. And now a call against Reese. Gets this crowd up. Well, it's, getting, it's been getting a little chippy, so the officials are extra eyes on some of these plays off the ball, but Caitlin Clark right here comes off of this, and look at the little step back, creates some space, a little miscommunication in the switch, and she, again, doesn't need much time or space, and shooters have short-term memories, right? Yeah. They're like those goldfish. <laughs> That's a third foul on Angel Reese, who's sitting on the bench now for Maryland. Collins in for her, Sonato, oh, in and out. Sellers decided not to pull the trigger, Benzin. And this is the difference right here for Maryland that Brenda Freeze was talking about. Typically, they want to get those quick shots. Now, possession, basketball. Sellers missed just about everything. Rebound taken down by a falter. Here they are in transition. Clark says this is when she's at her best. Feuerbach stopped by Collins. Feuerbach unable to get through that double. Ryman Miller, biggest offensive threat now with Reese on the bench. Yeah, really good execution. Get somebody at the high post in that 2-3 zone. And Diamond Miller is a shooter. You cannot give her space. And was down a bit from last year scoring-wise, but playing on a bum knee all year. Guarding 
Clark. High degree of difficulty on that shot by a falter. Miller, there's Benson left open for three. Bibby able to take it away and then fouled. As we hit a timeout in Iowa City, it is Valentine's Day, and I'm going to tie that in to Caitlin Clark because she's got some delicious numbers. Struggling from the floor, but boy, her season still has been historic. And on this Valentine's Day, let's give her a little love. Leads the nation in points per game. That candy, yes, leads the nation in assists <laughs> per game. Oh wait, leads the nation in triple doubles. What about those little candy hearts? Are you a fan? No. Yeah, I mean, uh, but they're cute. They're very, very sweet. And these numbers, certainly sweet. Number one in the country in uh, overall points and assists, also an average. Third as far as getting the free throw line and making them. But uh, Caitlin Clark, there you see the numbers, very un Caitlin Clark like. More turnovers, twice as many turnovers as field goals. Leads her team in rebounding. Leads her team, obviously, in scoring and assists, so she leads the nation. Leads them in free throw percentage, getting to the line, threes per game. Double doubles, and no one has ever led Division One in points per game and assists. No woman has, and she is doing that right now. But Maryland continues to just chew up Iowa. Well, it's a tall task right now for Iowa to keep Maryland off of the offensive glass. And you can see the lack of size on the floor, but right now also the lack of discipline boxing out as Tony Taiwo gets to the rim. Strong finish. And that's one thing Iowa's going to have to do. They're going to have to attack the paint, get some scores like this, get to the foul line, or draw multiple defenders and then kick for the threes after that. Second foul on Diamond Miller. Iowa completes the three-point play. Then Iowa, the best free throw shooting team in the Big Ten. 16-point advantage for Maryland. Playing before the largest home crowd in Iowa City this season. Over 9,800 people, that's a travel on Collins. Yeah, and that's a, it's a dead ball turnover. So again, Iowa not able to get out in transition. Britta Freeze was really worried about Iowa in transition. One of, one of the best ways to control transition defense is offensive execution, and Maryland has been so good on the offensive end of the floor here tonight. Back door, gosh, that looked good, but it couldn't be handled by Martin. Monica Sonano, who is second in scoring, averaging over 20 points per game, does have 14 tonight, but only two in this quarter. Playing with some foul trouble, she has three. Miller really wanting the ball. Spinning. Beck Bibby knocked it right back to her, but now here's a one on three. Clark waits for some help. Sonano running the floor well and finishing with the left. Yeah, that's a great job of Sonano to continue to run the floor and Caitlin Clark to be patient enough to wait for her to get in the right spot to make the pass. And now, so most of the fans standing trying to get Iowa back in this game. Tyro with the steal in the bucket. Here come the Hawks. Timeout, Maryland. Tywo helping to fuel the comeback. Tywo, who only averages five points per game, but getting out with the steal, has a three-point play, and Iowa scratching back, now down a dozen. Well, Iowa has three double-figure scores, and one of them in McKenna, McKenna Warnock is not on the floor. Got to find production from other players. 
Miller had it taken away. Sonano forces the turnover. Marshall, she's unguarded. Got it. That's as open as she has been all night long. And how about Gabby Marshall having an eye on her the whole way, takes the penetrating bounce to draw a defender. but the freshman Sellers quiets the crowd. Pam, she just keeps getting better and better. Bibby trying to come over on the help side, knocked it out of bounds. You gotta see that. You have to see that and you have to skip the basketball. And Iowa's made its last four shots. Clark trying to take Benzin off the bounce. Step back, wouldn't go. Sellers gets the miss. And the freshman brings it up. Miller calling for it, left open on the wing. Buries it. Great execution, time and score. Brenda Freeze knew exactly what she wanted and got it. Caitlin Clark to end the quarter. Got it on the back. So Clark struggling early, but you can't keep her down for long. What? What did we say we were going to have, Pam? Buckets, right? Buckets. Caitlin Clark off the pass, has the time and space, knocks it down. Trailed by 20 with seven minutes to go in the third. Now only down 11 as we hit our last 10 minutes. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you from a very loud Carver Hawkeye Arena. Sellers everywhere. Yeah, and Iowa was already having a tough time keeping Maryland off the glass. Now in the zone, you have to make a concerted effort to find someone. Diamond Miller's three is well short, but it's off an Iowa hand. Just two seconds to shoot for the Terps. Bibby inbounds. Throws it towards the rim. Angel Reese, a little bit too strong. Sellers crashed in there. Well, the zone's been good to Iowa. They played man-to-man -man on that last defensive possession. The zone has been good, but you've got to finish the play. And Sonano was pretty lucky that she didn't get called for a foul on that. But right here, it looks like Sonano might have gotten a hand on the ball and hit it out of Seller's hands. Actually, a foul has been called on Monica oh. Sonano, and that's her fourth. That is a fourth. That is a huge call. And their second leading scorer. Miller splitting the defense, take it away. They're calling the charge. Well, you can see when Diamond Miller comes around, just yeah, leading with that elbow and the hook right there. It's a good call by the official. Three now on Diamond Miller. Sonano out with the three fouls. Addison O'Grady, number 44 in pink, comes in, gives it to Clark. Iowa hangs on because Reese could not field the rebound cleanly. Andrew Reese with 22 points. You see Caitlin Clark. Different story in the second half, but still well below her season average of 28 points per game. O'Grady comes in and hits it. Well, look, Pam, you know it's just a matter of time. I mean, uh, Iowa is a really good offensive team, one of the best in the country. You anticipate they're going to have a run. Now Maryland needs to respond. Marshall knocked it back. Reese. 
surrounded. Couldn't get the follow to go. Oh, Grady missed, but not twice. How about Addison O'Grady coming in for Solano, getting four quick points. He doesn't get a lot of playing time, particularly in Big Ten games. Coming in with Cesano. Solano with four fouls. Yes. Got four quick points in yeah. that 7-0 run. Be ready when your number's called. Benzin dribbling through the lane. Bibby. And now O'Grady gets a rebound. Refreshing from Aurora, Colorado. Step back, Clark! I'd like to see Iowa set some step-up screens for Clark at about half court. Miller oh, couldn't handle it. And this crowd is a big factor in this game. Brenda Freeze. Fans want to give the hometown girl a technical. <laughs> skip, the skip is there. Gotta look at that skip. Or get it moving quicker. Marshall guarded by Benzin. Kate Martin called for the charge. Drawn by Benzin. Well, we've seen a few of these here tonight. Martin just driving down the lane line, lowers that shoulder. Great defensive play by Benzin. And there's four fouls now on Martin. So both Sonano and Martin have four, two starters for Iowa. Yep, that's trouble. Yep. Women's basketball coming your way on ABC Sunday afternoon. Two of the top teams in the SEC, the number one team, South Carolina, hosting Tennessee. ABC's coverage begins at 1 Eastern. You can also catch it on the ESPN app. South Carolina with Aaliyah Boston, who is on the top of many, if not just about all, player of the year at least theoretical ballots. Oh, that's a that's an emphatic block by Reese. But Caitlin Clark, yeah. you know, she making a case. She made a case to be Player of the Year last year as a freshman. She did. She she really did, and she's been even better this year. You just look at her numbers, the double doubles, the scoring, the triple doubles. Great look and finish by Gabby Marshall. Lead is only five. Great execution underneath out of bounds. What a read by Marshall to just cut back door. A good find. And this Iowa 2-3 zone has slowed Maryland down. It's forced them to hesitate a little bit when they catch the ball. They're not getting shots in rhythm like they were getting in the first half. That was good transition defense. Iowa can't convert. And Maryland now with three straight turnovers. Kozlova comes back in at four points in the first half. I mentioned that Ashley Owusu is out. Faith Masonis also tore her ACL against Indiana in early January. And She's kind of a scrappy kid at 6-1, so that's another player down for the Terps. McKenna Warnock out for Iowa. Neither team at full strength, but what a game this has turned out to be. Oh, what a finish by Angel Reese. Angel Reese has just been terrific. She's been solid. She's been solid defensively, offensively, getting other players involved. 
24 points, two off her season high. Clark just a little bit too strong, maybe able to board it. Bellew chases down, doesn't have numbers. Bends in. Huge three. Katie Benson, since she's moved to the point, shooting numbers down a little bit because she has to be more of a facilitator, but she's one of the best in the country at threes last year for Maryland and when she was at Harvard. Yeah, she's just not getting as many shot attempts. You know, we have Ashley Wilson, who's a playmaker on the floor. Benson not getting as many shot attempts, but she's doing an excellent job of running offense, of maintaining and dictating tempo. There she is with the drive, rejected by O'Grady. Clark. Finds Tywo. O'Grady. Coming in and making an impact. Madison O'Grady has been really good for Iowa tonight. Making a case to get some more minutes. Active on defense, active on the glass, finishing her shots inside. Eight points and five rebounds pressed into action with Sonano's foul trouble. They got a hand on that and forced a turnover. Sonano will check in at the next whistle for the Hawkeyes. Clark can't get it. Boy, Reese just out jumped O'Grady. Now Maryland with an eight point advantage, slowing things down. Damn, Angel Reese is just tough, oh, like physically tough, competitive. You know, we talk about you got to have a little nasty in you. She's got it. Bibby. Maryland getting some threes here to extend the lead after Iowa chipped away. And now Bibby with the pick. She scores with Caitlin Clark still on the floor in the backcourt. I think Lisa Buda was trying to call timeout before the pass of Caitlin Clark and didn't get it. She is furious that she didn't get that timeout, but well, Katie Benz and the company making a run. Well, you knew Iowa was going to make a run, and Maryland's found an answer. Benzin gets an open three. She hadn't gotten a lot of them, and she knocks that one down. You see Angel Reese is loving it. And then Chloe Bibby, and we've seen this time and time again. She gets a little brush screen, gets her feet set, knocks down another one, and then defensively in transition, outside hand, able to tip it ahead and get a layup in transition. Shooting the three has been a big difference in this game. Maryland 9 of 20, that's 45%. Iowa on the other hand is hit just 4 of 16. And there you see it was a 20 point advantage. Iowa chipped away to get, get it back into single digits. But the Terrapins coming up with some big shots. Well, that's what you have to do, you know, to win, to win in this league, to win against ranked opponents, to win on an opponent's home floor. You got to answer runs. You got to make big plays. And I love this right here. Just the communication, the leadership by Angel Reese. You know, we hear so much from coaches about, you know, hey, we don't have that leader. We don't have that alpha. We don't have that dog. Angel Reese is that dog. And her mom, who was known as Big Angel, was a terrific basketball player herself at UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, in their Hall of Fame. That's a nice three for Martin. And Angel Reese's brother is on the men's yes. team at Maryland. They both wear number 10, which was Big Angel's number as well. Yes, brother Keeping Julian. Him in the end, though. Yes. 10-point lead. Sellers couldn't get to it, but she was fouled. Super Tuesday men's doubleheader coming your way at 7 Eastern. Number 9 Duke welcomes in Wake Forest to Cameron Indoor. And then Oscar Shibwe and number 4 Kentucky against number 16 Tennessee. That's a sonic blockbuster. Both games on the app and ESPN on Tuesday. Amy. 
Angel Reese, 24 points, two off her career high. Miller with 19, Bibby with 16. The big three for Maryland tonight. Miller on Tyrell has the distinctive height advantage. Reese just won't give up. Pam, she's just relentless on the offensive glass. I mean, she, she might not have the best finish around the rim, but then she goes and gets it. You see the offensive rebound, great position to get it on the weak side. She doesn't get the first one. She certainly knows where it's going, and she's just quick to the ball, and she's just tough. She plays with multiple levels of effort and just outworks and out toughs opponents on the glass. Monica Sonano has just fouled out 16 points for her to go along with five rebounds. Well, Grady coming back in has taken advantage of the minutes she has gotten for Iowa. Reese gets one out of two. Time running out now for the Hawkeyes. Another step back three for Clark. Just not her night. O'Grady gets the rebound, but then tied up right away. Possession arrow in favor of Iowa. Clark might have gotten away with the travel. Uh, loose balls. Just relentless pursuit by both teams. Inside two minutes to go. Well, I've just been really impressed with the discipline of Maryland offensively, of pushing when they have the advantage in transition, bringing it back and slowing it down when they don't. Clark took it away from Bibby. Oh gosh, Sutter's just absolutely stood up. Taiwo. More bodies crashing to the floor. So Kaylin Clark, just 17 points. That is just one point more than her season low, 16 against Southern early in the season. And needless to say, this is not a Kaitlyn Clark like performance. Yeah, she's really struggled tonight, but you have to give Maryland a lot of credit. I mean, the, the length and athleticism that Maryland has put on her defensively have made life difficult. And a chance for Clark to get an old fashioned three point play. Well, and this time she doesn't have a longer defender on her, so she attacks, bends it inside, uses the step through. Great job of initiating contact and finishing. And I believe that's Benzin's fifth foul. It is. Katie Benzin has fouled out. Last year against Iowa, Benzin had a career high 29 points with nine threes. When she was a shooting guard running the point now with a Wusu out. Benzin fouls out with five points and five assists. And Caitlin Clark, who almost never misses at the free throw line, heads there now. Boy. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, no, but no. everybody knows, Pam. Yes. It almost never misses. <laughs> but they get it right back. Goodness gracious. Angel Reese. And Pam, like, you just you look at Angel Reese and her long arms just getting a hand on the ball. And the length of Maryland has really affected Caitlin Clark here tonight. And I love the reaction, the energy. Marshall commits the foul. Iowa after this. 
tough stretch. You talked earlier about the, what COVID and yes. certain things have done to schedules, and uh, the committee should take into, a, into account some of these games. How about two games against Indiana coming yeah. up? Two games, back to back, a day in between. One on the road, one at home as Sellers misses. And Maryland is coming up. They're finishing. This is the first of four straight games against ranked teams, two of whom, Michigan and Indiana, yes. are in the top ten. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a brutal stretch. And, you know, some of it COVID-related, condensed schedule. I mean, these teams are dealing with a lot and having to play a lot of games in a short amount of time with injuries and short benches. Martin draws the foul. Now they're under a minute to go. Reese has just picked up her fourth foul. And we want to say congratulations. Our yes. colleague Debbie Antonelli is now in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, uh, going in as a contributor, and has been a mainstay for ESPN for so long, doing so much uh, off the court as well. So congrats to her. And a pretty good class going in this yeah, year. Yeah, it really is. And certainly congratulations to Debbie. I mean, she has impacted our game in a number of ways. And Becky Hammond, Penny Taylor, Doug Bruno, Paul Sandiford. I mean, the list goes on. But uh, congratulations to, to all of those being inducted. All well-deserved. Going to be in that Hall of Fame, which is in Knoxville. If you ever have a chance, certainly you should go check it out. And uh, Andy Landers brought up a really good point about Doug Bruno. And he was talking about not just his impact in our game, but impact in youth sports. I mean, growing up in the Midwest, all you knew was Doug Bruno basketball camps. He put together tremendous basketball camps that everyone from the Midwest area went to, hundreds and hundreds of kids, and you know, really growing the game from the grassroots up. Still getting it done over at DePaul. The University of Maryland. Fighting off this furious comeback. They're going to come away with the victory and get up to 19 wins on the season. According, according to Charlie Cream, our bracketologist, they will slot into the top 16. When you think about it, this is a Maryland team that in, in November and December had struggled. You know, they struggled. They, they were missing players. They went to the Bahamas and didn't have two starters, three players have been through a lot of adversity, and you see their resume right there. And to fight themselves back into this top 16, it's, it's really incredible to watch. And Sellers, I've been really impressed with Cheyenne Sellers, this true freshman. Six-two, playing a lot of, with poise and did a lot of defensive damage on uh, Caitlin Clark. Oh, yeah. Get in that assignment right away and impact Caitlin Clark in the first quarter the way that she did was really impressive. And talk about rising to the challenge. I mean, you, the Maryland defense has just been terrific on Caitlin Clark. And you can just see the swarming defense. And we're not talking about swarming at like 5'6, five, 5'7. Five, we're talking about swarming at like 6'2, six, 6'3 six, with massive wingspans. There are always multiple players coming at her using their length, using their athleticism. The Maryland game plan has been excellent. And they have executed it to a T. Should future opponents take a look at this film, or, or does it just is it just Maryland's personnel that is making this work? I so mean, well? you can certainly look at it, but I think Maryland's personnel has a lot to do with it. I mean, they just have a lot of natural length and athleticism that they can use to defend, and they're so versatile. They can switch all screens, one through five, and not everybody, not every team is built that way. And Caitlin Clark told us before the game that that was a concern because they had not played a team that had done that switching one through five. And certainly something different. We're not used to seeing this from the nation's leading scorer. She is 7 of 25 from the floor, has missed 10 of her 13 threes. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. When, when you have a scorer like Caitlin Clark, you, you want them to have to work for everything. You want them to have to do it in a high volume, you know, number. And Maryland's just made life very, very difficult for Caitlin Clark. Maryland has started to dominate a little bit in this series where they have won nine out of ten, but this would be their fourth straight win, including the Big Ten final. And they beat them twice last year in the regular season and in the Big Ten final, and both times they scored over 100 points. 
And you mentioned earlier, Maryland scoring down a little bit this year. Missing players, Awusu being out now. But they're still a dangerous team. And when they get Ashley Awusu back, even more dangerous. Oh, no question about it. And, and that's one of the things, too, you, you think about teams. Some teams are peaking now because they didn't have their personnel in November and December. And they're looking at the replay to see who the ball went out on. Ten tournament being played in Indianapolis again this year. That should be yes. something. Are you kidding me? Oh. That's that the Big Ten tournament is going to be spectacular. And we will have the final for you. Looking forward to that. Michigan and Indiana having their best seasons. What I hope for that Big Ten tournament is that everybody comes into the tournament healthy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, everybody comes into the tournament healthy at their best. Because it is going to be a lot of fun. And Caitlin Clark held to just 19 points. Second lowest scoring output of the season. Still the fans here are appreciative. And, and how, how cool is this for Brenda Freeze to be able to come back home to Iowa? Special moment. Special time. Her family is here. Cedar Rapids native, lost her dad, Bill, to whom she was very close. He passed away just days before his 90th birthday. Her sisters are here, mom. Donna is here, so a very special trip, very emotional when we yes. talked to her about it earlier today, but a good way to, to leave her home state. As Maryland wins it, 81 to 69. There she's going up to find her mom. So the Turks take it. Reese with 25, Miller with 20 for Maryland. As they hold Caitlin Clark in check, the emotion yeah. showing on Brenda Freeze's face. What a night for the Terrapins. Coming up next, College Basketball Live for Stephanie White. I'm Pam Ward as we say so long from Iowa.